What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of In My Feelings. Well, I'm definitely all up in my feelings today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Woo! Today has been a tough day. Today has been a tough day, and it started yesterday, man. YouTube deleted my account. And for anyone that don't know, I've been on YouTube really since about 2007, 2008. But my main page that I've been using, I've been using that page since 2009. I got discovered by a lot of people, got my fan base early on, um, casting directors from MTV. All type of people saw the sketches that I used to do. I used to do sketches back in the day. Uh, and, and I was going viral before viral. So a lot of some of your favorite uh, online people, um, they used to watch my stuff. That's how early I was when it came to sketches. Um, I, I had a Chris Brown Rihanna video. That's when the Chris Brown Rihanna situation happened. I did a Street Fighter video that went viral. Uh, and viral back then was like your videos used to get on other blog spots too. So my videos would get on, not only would it go viral on YouTube, but it would get on websites like Worldstar. That's how I found out what World Worldstar was. My homeboy hit me up like, yo, your video on Worldstar. I was like, what the fuck is Worldstar? He was like, yo, they post videos. I'm like, these niggas ain't paying me no money. They just post this. They just stealing my shit. That was early. That's how early it was. Now you'll be happy for your video to be on Shade Room or something, but that's how early it was. So... My videos would get on This Is 50 and Vlad, on uh, Vlad TV. It would get on World Star. So that's how I used to go viral back in the day. And people used to know me from my sketches. So anyways, I was super early on YouTube, man. So I just want to kind of give y'all kind of like the backstory of like my history with YouTube. Uh, I got off YouTube to focus on my acting. Uh, I started booking TV, little TV roles here and there on MTV. I started, uh, I got 21 Jump Street. You know, I started doing those type of things. Then I seen my homeboy. Uh, spoken reasons. He got booked off of his YouTube videos. Maybe like 2011, 2010, he did a movie called The Heat. I said, let me get my ass back on YouTube. I said, because if he's booking movies off of YouTube, let me get my ass back on YouTube. So I got back on YouTube, uh, did videos with some very talented people. Man, I did videos with an early, early Matt Reif, early Tony Baker, um, I'm talking about if you go back and look early Brisha Webb, London Brown, like if you go back, well, you can't even go back and look at my shit now because it's deleted. But uh, I might have some of these videos on a hard drive or something. I might upload them to a new YouTube page if I do one. Um, but all, I had all these early people before they popped in my YouTube videos. And I prided myself on that because I'm not someone that was like a bandwagon person when it came to talent. It's some I'm someone who I pride myself on being able to spot talent very early. That's part of the reason why I do the, the um, excuse me if I y'all seen food, because I just ate a peanut butter uh, and jelly sandwich. But um, if y'all seen anything, come on my lip. Anybody that's <laughs> listening, uh, aud uh, uh, audible. Um, so anyways, I pride myself on being able to find talent. And not only finding talent, but giving them a platform to shine. That's why I'm always posting people stuff on my Instagram stories or whatever, whatever. I'm always saluting people because I love seeing other people win. Uh, and, and that's sincere. And and so, anyway, people don't always find it sincere, but it's sincere. That's why I do it. So, anyways, so... I had all these videos, and then yesterday, so then I, I got off of, I got off YouTube, I went, well, uh, I'm missing steps, so I got back on YouTube when I saw Spoken Reasons, got a movie, The Heat, with Sandra Bullock and M Melissa McCarthy from his YouTube, so I said, let me get back on YouTube, I immediately went viral again, because that's what I do, I excel in sketches, so I immediately went YouTube, I did these um, BET Hip Hop Cypher spoofs. So BET would have these cyphers that they used to do for the BET Hip Hop Awards. Me and my homeboys and homegirls did spoofs. So I played Kendrick Lamar, my homeboy did Waka Flocka, my other homeboy did um, Drake, and so on and so forth. And those immediately hit, got up on all the sites. So I immediately went viral again, I was back in the YouTube game. Then I got off of it again. I started on Vine, Vine came out. And I remember I was on tour with Atheon Crockett. I'm getting to YouTube deleting my fucking page. Don't worry. Just hold on tight. I got to take you on a goddamn journey. Okay. I got on Vine. Um, this is when King Batch had just hit 4 million. 
Um, my homeboys was on there, uh, uh, Alfonso McCulley, uh, Day Storm, like a lot of cats that I knew were on Vine and it was getting it in. Uh, and I was like, well, shit, let me get on Vine. So I started getting on Vine. I'm on tour with Atheon Crockett. We're in a Foot Locker. And while we're at the Foot Locker, some kids came up on me. They was like, oh, my, dude, oh my God, you the dude from Vine. And I should have been happy. Remember, this 2014. All right, I should have been happy. But in my mind, I'm thinking, yo, I moved out to L.A. to be a TV and a movie star. I didn't move out here to be no fucking Vine celebrity. Like, I could do Vine from anywhere. So I took it as an insult. They don't know that, but I took it as an insult. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I moved to L.A. to do Vine? I said, well, I could have did that in Florida. So I got off of social media again. Dumb me. Stupid me. Right? I Who knew? I, there's some people that knew where the internet was going. I didn't necessarily know where the internet was going. His spoken reasons defense, out of all the, the shit that he gets um, <laughs> online, um, he knew where the internet was going. He told me very early, he said, man, I see it. I see they're they going to be doing movies on, on the internet and all that shit. And he was pretty much right. It just became streaming. But that is the internet. Netflix ain't nothing but an app, right? It, it became an app. Um, Max, I mean, yeah, it's on cable, but it's an app. Hulu's an app. So he was right. Movies did go to online. So anyways, I get off Vine. Then I said, let me focus on my acting. Okay, I book Rush Hour. Book Rush Hour. I book MacGyver. Fantastic. Everything is going according to plan. And then I started to realize, I'm like, yo, I need to build up my online following. I said, because MacGyver's going to get canceled one day. Rush Hour already got canceled. I need to build back up my online following. I said, let me get back on YouTube. Let me let me get on Instagram and shit like that. Let me start building up because after MacGyver ended, I said, I realized I really love stand-up comedy even more so than acting on somebody else's project. So let me start building up my fan base. So I get on TikTok. Now I'm on TikTok. It's all leading to my YouTube cancellation. Stick with me, people, okay? So I get on fucking TikTok. I'm winning on TikTok. I gained 40,000 followers in four months on TikTok. Then TikTok started violating me. They started violating me. Man, my homeboy Lee. Some of y'all know my homeboy Lee. Works with me. My homeboy Lee hit 100,000 followers on TikTok. They fucking canceled. They deleted. They canceled. They deleted his TikTok page. Had to start back from zero. When he started it back, his algorithm was never the same. He couldn't get the numbers that he used to get. Meanwhile, I'm killing, but TikTok's starting to violate me. Now they're starting to suppress my content. I'm not picking up followers like I was. It's harder and harder for me to pick up followers. So YouTube shorts come out. And I started really doing these. And that's what the, the TikTok is when I started doing these reaction videos. Now, this is very key. Anybody that stayed tuned for this long, this is very key to this story. I started doing reaction videos on TikTok. My homeboy said, hey, Jay, you need to get on TikTok, bro. You could, you could start really building your fan base. It ain't a MacGyver fan base. You're building a Justin Hires fan base, which is what I was trying to do. Build a legitimate Justin Hires fan base. Start doing these reaction videos. Start doing these reaction videos. I said, all right, I'm going to post them on every platform. They started doing numbers. Started going up. But TikTok started violating me, all right? Now, the type of videos I was doing specifically were sexually related and racially related related this was on purpose i realized when i really broke down which videos were doing really well on social media for me they were either sexually related or they were racially driven it was either something about race that i said or it was something said a girl twerking or a girl being super thirsty for attention and i would call them out on it and those would be the videos that would hit the most cool this leads to youtube so i might start getting a bunch of violations on tiktok tiktok they done suppress my material. None of my shit really hit anymore. I've been stuck at 92,000 followers on TikTok for months now. I said, fuck TikTok, whatever. I still post on there, but I just really go on there to get the videos. I said, okay, let me focus. YouTube shorts came out. I said, okay, let me start taking these reaction videos that I'm posting on Instagram and TikTok. Let me post them on YouTube shorts also and Facebook. Facebook taking off. I'm building a following on Facebook st still to this day. Facebook is doing right by me to this day. Um, Instagram. Every blue moon, but Instagram always suppressing my shit. They never, I look like a lame on Instagram. Anybody that follow me on Instagram, I swear I don't pay for followers. Instagram just always suppresses my fucking content, and they always make me look like a fucking loser. It is what it is. But I promise you, if you go over to my Facebook, you'll see I have videos that got like 17 million views. Okay. When it comes to YouTube shorts, I might have got violated once 
on YouTube Shorts. Okay, that's cool. Got a strike against me. All right, you can't post for two days. All right, that's cool. That's whatever. I posted a video yesterday. It was a girl eating a big-ass hot dog, like deep throat in the hot dog. Again, doing shit for attention. This is a video that's already circulating online. I do a reaction to it, and I say two more inches, and she'll be able to handle me. <laughs> that's That was the joke. Apparently, it got flagged by the AI or somebody reported it. I don't know. You never fucking know. And YouTube not only took down the video, they deleted my entire fucking account. And I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? My wife was like, well, check, see if you got an email. Check my email. Sure enough, it says, uh, we're, we, we've uh, deleted your account because uh, nudity and sexual whatever, whatever. So you could do an appeal. I did an appeal. Now, you could, first of all, there's no nudity. I don't show any nudity. In any video that I've ever posted, one, because I've been on network TV. I just can't be going around posting clips where uh, actual nipples and pussy is hanging out. Okay, that's fucking absurd. Okay, I still got one foot in the industry, all right? I know I be doing social media shit and Instagram shit and YouTube and stuff, but I still got one foot in the industry, okay? I'm not going to just be posting shit now. Do, do these chicks be having camel toe? Do they be showing cleavage? Do they be dancing suggestively? Yes. But th again, these are videos that's already posted online, and I'm just reacting to them. Their videos aren't getting banned and removed. They're not losing their accounts. They're not getting deleted, not that I know of. I'm reacting to their shit. So before I can even react to their shit, Whatever platform, whatever it's found on, it should be taken down off of that plat platform first. If so, that's that's neither. But these these social media sites leave up these girls twerking and showing cleavage and they ass cheeks and all that shit because they know for real, for real, that keeps retention on their social media platform and that's why they don't take down that content. So now here I am being a man reacting to that content and now I'm wrong. Now you want to violate my shit. Now you want to delete my account so you could do an appeal i didn't appeal i did an appeal and with the appeal uh i stated you know i've been on youtube since 2009 i'm a comedian i was just reacting to the video um you know please hopefully somebody can help sent that off last night went to sleep with the hope and a prayer i wake up this morning by 5 30 this morning I get an email back from youtube saying we've thoroughly reviewed your page and we've decided to uh, continue to block um, or deactivation of your account. There's nothing you could do about it. You nigger. <laughs> they didn't say that. They didn't call me the N word, but I mean, I felt very disrespected. And so now I'm in a very strange place. I talked to my homeboy. Ironically, the person I started my YouTube page with, Justin Mitchell, he called me this morning, ironically, by 5 50 this morning, because he thought I was in Florida. So he says, and. I had to tell them that the page got deleted, you know, the videos we did. Now, this is what this is what's hurtful. I had a bunch of videos that went viral on that page. Um, my, my music, my uh, my music videos was on that page. Some of those music videos did very well. Uh, I had my day ones podcast that I did with my best friends. You know, that was on that page. Um, so there was a lot of stuff on that. So I had to tell him, man, listen, all them sketches gone, man. And he was like, the first thing out of his mouth was like, man, you got to get a lawyer or something because you spent all that money and energy on those videos and you can't even retrieve them. That's not right. I said, I agree with you. I said, but I guarantee you they delete people's shit all the time. And I bet there's something in the fine print that lets them get away with that shit. Just delete somebody's account and they don't owe them nothing when it comes to letting those people be able to retrieve their content, which is fucked up. Because all that is gone unless I have some of those videos backed up on a hard drive somewhere. So I said, but really what I'm trying to lean into, the bigger understanding is what lesson is God trying to provide me? You know, what's the lesson to come out of this? Is it content branding? Maybe I, I was going the wrong route when it comes to this sexual shit. Now, everything wasn't sexual. I'm just saying the sexual and the racial shit did the best for me consistently. Um, but all my content wasn't sexual you know but it was a good portion that was <laughs> love them butt cheeks um so i said well what lesson is is trying to come from this um uh, and then what he was telling me and then i just did an episode of uh fuck your feelings today with jeremiah watkins and von de carlo and 
Vaughn was saying, yo, you be authentic. My homeboy, Justin Mitchell, said the same thing this morning. He said, man, you're not really being your authentic self on your social media anyways. He said, when you're doing the reaction shit, that's cool. He said, but people don't know how smart you are. He was like, people don't know how smart you are. People don't really know the real Justin all the way through and through. And what I realized was part of that is, yeah, man, I said it on the podcast today with Vaughn and Jeremiah. You know, y'all check out that episode. But I definitely said that. A part of me, I used to pride myself on saying I don't care what people think about me. I used to say that. I don't care what people think about me. I don't give a fuck what people think about me. But the truth of the matter is, I do. And a part of me is I'm fearful. I'm fearful that if I'm truly my authentic self, people won't like me. They'll say he's an asshole. They'll say he's too blunt. He's too aggressive. He's he's a terrier that barks loudly, you know. And, and I don't know. I heard a quote that they say, when you open your mouth, that lets the world know who you are. And I like myself. I like myself. But will anyone else like me? And what Vaughn was saying was, you still have a responsibility. She said, being authentic doesn't mean you just vomit any thought that comes to your mind. But it's also, you know, still being responsible for what you're saying, but still doing what you feel is right and, and saying the things and doing the things basically that you want to do uh don't mean you have to just be like a dick that's just, i'm summing up what she said listen to the full episode to really hear her breakdown uh but and i agree with her i agree i agree with everything that was said so right now i'm in a point i'm in a point where yeah i'm gonna probably start another youtube and now it's like what direction do i want to go you know what kind of content do i want to put out uh consistently to really build that audience back up. But it just pisses me off that these companies can just delete your shit. It's like it's like having a sandcastle. It's like building a sandcastle at the beach. And these companies could come and kick over your sandcastle whenever you want to. Whenever they want to. They could just come by and kick your shit. And say, man, fuck your sandcastle. It's like Snoop Dogg with uh, Jody Son and Baby Boy. Man, man, fuck your fort. You know, just kick your shit over. And you just force the rebuild if you want to. Or you could just say, fuck your platform. But it's not going to be until, and then my homeboy Justin told me this. He said, Justin, what you're going to accomplish, my wife told me this too. She said, what you're going to accomplish, but my homeboy just said, what you're going to accomplish is going to be on a whole nother level when you do. And he was like, you somebody that you would build your own platform. And that is something that I would love nothing more. And it's not going to be until we have a platform where you could, honestly, you could be your authentic self. With no limitations, no restrictions, no censorship, and have the creator's natural algorithm. Meaning, if I have 100,000 followers, when I post something, all 100,000 of my followers see my content. It's not going to be on some tier system where, okay, I got to get 100 likes in two minutes and then it'll open it up to 5,000 of my followers. And then after, if I get 200 likes... And, you know, 20 minutes, then it'll open it up to 10,000 of my followers. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. And they do that because the, at the end of the day, these companies want to make money, make money from advertising. They want to make money from ads. They want you to pay for the boost is what I'm saying. So they suppress your material in hopes that you will pay them to boost your content. That's why if you always see, oh, this video is doing well. Do you want to boost it? Do you want to do, do you want to do a boost on it? Because that's how they're making their money also. And that's what they want you to do is to pay for that shit. So until there's a platform that lets you be authentically you, that shows your algorithm and not super sensitive when it comes to censorship. Listen, I understand they just can't show allow content of people getting murdered. That that being said, there's content of people getting murdered on YouTube. You know, there, there was footage of niggas getting their heads cut off. So it's like you coming at the, a comedian. I can understand if I wasn't even a comedian. I'm like making jokes. So yeah, man, it's very, it's very new. It's very fresh. The shit just happened this morning that it was official. You know, I have a couple people that I'm gonna try to reach out to and see, um, you know, if they may know somebody at YouTube. And if they don't, they don't. And like Jeremiah Watkins said, he said it might be a blessing, man. He said it might be a, a something, a blessing in disguise, basically. Like I can start over, post this new type of content consistently. Uh, be my authentic self and, and build build up this new page And it might be even bigger than what I had before So yeah man That's it man That's what happened So if anybody's searching for my old content My old sketches 
uh, they're not up there. My F Your Feelings page is still up. My Urban Legends page is still up. Um, and then anything that was posted on any other platform that you know, somebody else owned um, is still up. But if you're looking for any of them sketches or my music videos or anything like that, it's gone. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm definitely in my feelings about it. And uh, But I'm also, like, focused on what you can control. So, so I'll be back, man. Um, it's like, what is it? Like a setback is is a setup for a get up or whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck you got to tell yourself so you don't kill yourself. <laughs> Rejection is God's protection, and everything happened for a reason. Oh, you know all that bullshit that we got to say. Me, me and my, my homeboy Lee was talking about that. All that shit we got to say to fucking make us keep pushing through. So that's what it is, man. Shout out to anybody that um listened to this, um uh, listened, and sat through to the end. Appreciate you. Like, comment. Subscribe to the page because boy, I need it. I, if I've never needed a subscriber before, I definitely need it now. And uh, appreciate y'all rocking with me. And uh, this is just the beginning of the evolution, the continued evolution of uh, Justin Hires. All right, peace. <laughs>